robbery epidemic. Provo police are keeping busy as two more businesses fall victim to a string of robberies in Utah County. Growth galore. The Provo and Orem area is growing faster than almost every other area in the nation. What's causing this bountiful bloom? And delegate debate. The race for Utah seats in the U.S. Senate is heating up. What strategies are Republican contenders using to hoist Orrin Hatch? I'm Anna Hayes. And I'm Angela Montier. It's Thursday, April 5th, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications. say a raw a mass gunman robbed tanning salons in Springville and Provo last night and they suspect it was the same person. 11 News reporter Benjamin Carter was on the scene and Ben why do they think the robberies are connected? It's because witnesses gave identical descriptions of the suspect to police. Police described the suspect as a six, six, five foot six Hispanic male medium build tattooed arms wearing a black ski mask with a small caliber handgun. Last night at 9.15 p.m., police say a man robbed the Waikiki Beach tanning salon in Provo. A suspect walked into Waikiki Beach holding a gun. We know that he fired around in the store. He then made contact with two female employees and demanded money. Police say the same suspect tried to rob Golden Globe tanning salon in Springville an hour earlier, but only got cash and purses. These are just the most recent in a series of different armed robberies in the Provo area over the last month. You know, sometimes our robberies, they, they go up and down. We'll, we'll go for a while without any, and then all of a sudden we'll have, just like we have lately, multiple robberies uh, in the city of Provo. On Saturday, a separate robbery took place in the Wells Fargo in downtown Provo, and Wells Fargo is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. On March 17th, two armed suspects robbed Daydaily Photo and Cosmetolitan Travel in Orem. Sergeant Matthew Siafanua says police rely on information from witnesses and surveillance to help track down culprits. Man, try to remember every detail, color hair, color pants, color shirt, height, weight, build. I mean, all of those things help us as investigators find our suspects. Police say when hailing a robbery, it is important to be good witnesses. And remember, safety first. Don't try to be a hero. So Ben, why tanning salons? If most people, you know, when they go tanning, they don't even use cash anyways. Yeah, it is kind of unusual, but police said that uh, because it's close to the highway and they're open late at night, it made for an easy getaway. Interesting. Thanks, Ben. Luis Miguel Cristobal walked out of court on Wednesday with more than he walked in with, a five-year to life prison sentence. Police arrested Cristobal after DNA evidence linked him to a gas station holdup last June. Investigators say he cut himself during the holdup, leaving blood at the scene. A Provo judge sentenced him on one count of aggravated robbery. Tim View football coach Lewis Wong now has a two-week extension to appeal his suspension and possible termination. The Provo School District granted Wong the extension because his attorney says she needs more time to put together a response to the termination letter. And the district says Wong will not be allowed to return to Tim View unless the appeal is, su is successful. The bigger the better. New stats from the U.S. Census Bureau show that the Provo Orem is one of the fastest growing areas in the nation. 11 News reporter Lauren Simpson is live on campus and tells us that we made the top 10. Lauren? We did make the top 10. Behind me, you can see Utah Valley, which grew 2.7% this past year. And while 2.7% may not sound like a lot on paper, it's actually three times as high as the national average. Good news for Provo Orem. The U.S. Census Bureau has pegged it as one of the fastest growing places in the nation. Officially, it came in at number seven, with Utah as the second fastest growing state in the nation, right behind Texas. But experts say the growth isn't just the result of an economic boom, it's a baby boom as well. A lot of people come here and enjoy everything the community has to offer, and then they stay here and they set up home after they graduate, they get jobs, they have families, and, and we know that we do families good here in Utah County. Utah Valley is known for having one of the highest birth rates in the nation, but Racker says the local growth also comes from big businesses like Microsoft and Adobe moving into the area. We're a very diverse economy here with a lot of different types of businesses, and so I think that, that all of that combines to make Utah County a, a very fertile place for business. County officials say they know all the construction work is a pain, but that it's necessary because it's preparing the area for even more growth in years to come. 
I sat down with Utah County Commissioner Larry Ellerston this morning, who told me about several more big business deals that are about to go through. Right now, we're not allowed to disclose who those big businesses are that are coming to the area, but that we can look forward to a lot more jobs in the Utah Valley really soon. More jobs, always great news. Thanks, Lauren. Desert Management Corporation announced today their CEO is retiring. The corporation that owns and operates KSL TV said Keith B. McMullen will be the new CEO and they hope his leadership qualities will help reach out to audiences worldwide. LDS Church leaders released McMullen as the second counselor in the presiding bishopric during last week's conference. With less than three weeks until the state Republican convention, some Utah Republicans are looking at their choices for candidates. 11 News reporter Haley Shockless went to the Republican debate to find out what the issues, what issues got the candidates talking. It's no surprise that topics like the space program or the nation's debt get candidates fired up, and last night was no exception. With an eager audience of 1,400 people, the stage lit up at Juan Diego Catholic High School for three senatorial candidates to meet, greet, and disagree. Right away, Republican contenders Chris Harrod and Dan Leonquist acknowledged Senator Orrin Hatch's senior position, and that issue left some people wondering if seniority should trump leadership. The system is what it is, so you about got to vote for somebody you don't really want just because of his seniority. That's a terrible system, we gotta change that. Each question of the debate prompted every candidate to discuss their strategy. And my goal as a U.S. Senator is actually to push the power back to the states and represent the states, uh, and, and then make sure that we control the national debt, which is, I believe, our greatest uh, national security issue. But all of the candidates agreed that cutting back on government spending would trim the deficit. It is not lost on me that I'm gonna have to pay for that as are a whole bunch of people in this room. You can't hold up the balanced budget in one hand and then pass for legislation that makes it impossible to balance the budget. That's where all the spending is, that's where the money is, that's where the bloated tax code is, that's where we need to take things, uh, uh, take things down a little bit if we're going to save this country. A second debate is set for April 16th in southern Utah. About a dozen Republicans are running for senator, but only Hatch, Lil Youngquist, and Herod will attend the debate. Anna? Thanks, Haley. And today's your chance to meet all the Republican contenders for office from Utah. Candidates running for federal, state, and local offices will be at a meet and greet at the Wells Fargo building in downtown Provo. The event is open to everyone. Check out our website, 11news.byu.edu, to see what time each candidate will be speaking. It's pretty cool. Yep. So when 11 News at noon returns, Soldier, Soldier School. Now that many Mer American troops are coming back home, they're hoping to hit the books, but things aren't running so smoothly. And mainstream marathons, 26 miles is not for the casual runner, but directors are seeing a big jump in registration. Find out why after the break. Connecticut plans to axe the death penalty, war veterans overwhelm computer systems, and the Coast Guard plans to sink a ghost ship. This is your look at news from across the nation. Lawmakers in Connecticut are abolishing the death penalty. The state Senate voted to repeal capital punishment and expect the House to follow suit. Governor Daniel Malloy says he'll sign the bill if it reaches his desk, making Connecticut the fifth state in five years to abolish execution. The proposed law would not apply to those currently on death row. Military service men and women are hoping to hit the books after serving their country. The Veterans Administration says it is processing 7,000 GI Bill claims a day. The workload, though, crashed their computer system, making veterans use the GI Bill to get funds for college and vet, or excuse me, veterans use the GI Bill funds to get funds for college or graduate studies, tech schools, flight schools, and other service-oriented degrees. The U.S. Coast Guard says it plans to sink a drifting ghost ship near Alaska's coast. The tsunami in Japan washed this de deserted thrawler away last year. The boat is part of a large pack of debris that is heading towards the United States. Coast Guard officials say the ship is, navigation hazard, is a navigation hazard and they plan to inspect it to make sure it's safe to sink. And that's your look at news from across the nation. Anna? 
Thanks, Angela. With the warmer spring temperatures, more people are getting outside and running in Utah Valley. 11 News reporter Jen Jacobson joins us live in the newsroom. Jen, I see people running outside all the time, even when it's freezing cold. What's going on? More Utahns are training for races than ever before. Marathon directors say they've seen a 10% increase in the number of people training the last decade. Runners are signing up for marathons months in advance, not just to ensure they'll have a place in the race, but also to start training for the big day. BYU student Melissa Nielsen just started training this week for the Utah Valley Marathon in June. Every day I'll run like three to six miles and then I'll have a break day and then the next day you all run 9, 10 miles. But signing up for a big race means much more than monotonous workouts. Three-time first place marathon winner Seth Wold says marathoning brings more benefits than staying in shape. Now people are finding out how much fun it is to run and then they come, they bring their friends and then they get all the benefits and then the friends get the benefits and then suddenly grandma's doing a marathon and that makes the numbers grow. Utah Valley Marathon Race Director Hiram Oaks says he's seen an increase in demand for half marathons. Many runners decide to train for shorter 5K races and half marathons before they commit to a full marathon. And there are almost 30 half marathons in Utah County, which is unbelievable for our population base. Oak says marathoning helps people accomplish their goals because they invest not just their time and energy to their workouts, but also money. Paying months in advance to race with family and friends gives people more reason to run. If you'd like some training tips on how to run races, visit our website at 11news.byu.edu. The next race is a 5K at Soldier Hollow this Saturday. Live in the newsroom, Jen Jacobson, 11 News. Should be a big crowd. Thanks, Jen. So to come on 11 News at noon. Home court help. The Jazz are hard to beat at home. We'll tell you why that's not the case on the road. Population one. If you're looking to buy the smallest town in the nation, all you need is 100 grand. And if you're looking for one last final taste of winter, all you have to do is wait till tomorrow. I'll have your 11 News weather when we return. Tika, what's this last taste of winter that we're going to get? Yeah. I know. It's, it's been kind of colder later in the yeah. evenings these past few days. We will have a cold day, but it'll warm right back up. Good news. So don't worry. Actually, taking a look outside right now, we can see see kind of that cold front moving in. We have some high clouds hanging out up there and we also have of course the Snow Peak Mountains in the far back. Currently outside it's 46 degrees. We're hitting um, 46 for the humidity as well and our wind speeds have kind of picked up. We're in the double digits which, has, which hasn't happened for a while so watch out for that. You'll probably feel that out as you're walking out and about today. Later on tonight we will experience a drop in temperature. We're actually dipping into the low 30s will hit a low of 31 degrees. We can expect some showers tonight before midnight and our sunset will be coming in just before 8 o'clock at 7.57 p.m. Taking a look at our sat map on Tuesday, I touched on this tropical storm that um, started out on the coast and has pulled more eastward towards us. Here we are in Utah right now. It's hitting central and southern Utah. It's kind of a weird storm. Northern up high in northern Utah. It's not getting so much of it. We are getting the cold front um, basically in central Utah. For our Utah highs, we can see we are a bit lower in, in um, central Utah. We're staying around in the high 50s, low 60s, 54 in Logan, 63 in Provo. Down in St. George, you guys are at a nice 73. Cedar City, 64. For their five-day forecast, they won't see any rain or cloud coverage per se, but they will be getting a lot of wind. Thursday, Friday, 72, 61. But take a look at their Sunday, Monday, 80 and a high of 84 on Monday. Not bad at all. Up in northern Utah, today will hit a high of 63. Friday is a 70% chance of snow. Bank on that snow, dress accordingly. But take a look at here, Saturday, 61, 70, 72, and Monday, a nice 75, guys. Ooh. This storm that's coming will be nothing but a blink. Good, I'm glad it's gonna come and then go fast. Go. <laughs> well, thanks, Kika. You're welcome.
The Loyola Marymount Lions are in Provo for BYU baseball's first home conference series of the season. The Lions lead the WCC, WCC standings with a perfect 3-0 record against conference foes. The Cougars are coming off a win at Utah and will try to ruin LMU's perfect record tonight as they play the first game of the weekend series at Miller Park. First pitch is at 6 p.m. So the come on 11 is at noon. Real estate steal. What can you buy these days for 100,000 bucks? An entire town. We'll tell you where when we get back. Would you like to have your own town and your own zip code? Sounds pretty cool to me. Well, Buford, Wyoming is the smallest town in the country and all 10 acres could be yours for just $100,000. The only person living in Buford is the mayor and he says he's selling the town with hopes that the new owner will update it for the 21st century. The purchase includes five buildings, a gas station and a tool shed, but the snow plow is not included. With all that snow, you'd think you'd need a snow plow. <laughs> I don't know, I love it's it. It's a pretty good deal though, so. Yeah, yeah I guess so. It seems I like you need to do a little more investing so that right. the town will work. Kind of build it up a little. <laughs> I think if I were to, to buy that town, I would rename it Annaville. Done. From Buford. <laughs> That's 11 News at noon for Thursday, April 5th. You can join us anytime on our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon.